In this video I will explain how the gramophone works and how I built some of the parts. And uh, let's start with the sound box that we have right here. Here you can see the needle, the needle holder, the arm that uh, transfers the vibrations. We have a metal plate and if you look closely you can see an o-ring the same like this and uh, this arm is riveted to the plate then we have the sound box itself the upper piece the lower piece and the support for the arm so on the inside it looks something like this Something like that, and then we have the metal plate on top, and then the top piece, and we also have the o-ring which holds the metal plate in place, it sits right here. And we have the arm, which goes from the uh, plate to the rest, and here we have the needle. Great illustration, I know. And the rest for the arm. And if you look closely on a gramophone record, which I have here. You can see that there are a bunch of small grooves and if you scale those grooves up it basically looks something like this. Basically something like that if you were to take a groove and put it in a straight line. And this is what the needle will follow. Just like my pen is doing right now. So those vibrations that are here, or the grooves in the disc, are transferred from the record, through the arm, and to the plate, which then makes vibrations, which in turn causes sound waves that is traveling inside the sound box that you can see here to further amplify the weak sound that comes from the sound box we add a gramophone horn like this one and uh, it's made of th thin pieces of wood I think it's like two millimeters and I took those thin sheets of wood and I put them under this template and then I used the router and followed this profile until I had five of these straight pieces and when I had five of those I took this block, it's a five sided block, it just made the process easier. Then I put all these sides onto this block and they were pointing in all directions. So I held them on the bottom and then I taped them. See, I put tape here and about every five centimeters I put more tape. So the whole thing was covered in tape and if you look closely you can see that the pieces are overlapping each other. Maybe it's easier to see here. You see that this piece is overlapping this and it goes around. That's to make it easier. So I had all this horn covered in tape and I removed the tape where I want the glue and I added it here and then I sat and held it 
for one minute. And when that's cured, I did the same one here, 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 all over. And when all that glue cured, I taped it, removed the next tape, repeated the process until I got to the end. And here was the trickiest part, because I had to add clamps and add glue and then hold it too. Because the bend is so sharp. So if I would make another horn, I would make this profile or this, uh, yeah, the profile wider here. But I, I made a paper template and you see the, the curve is even more sharp here. So when that was done, I wanted to curve the end. And if you look closely, you can see it's made of small pieces. So I took the horn to the bandsaw and I cut the piece off, sanded it at an angle, glued it back together, cut another piece off and did the same. A lot of times. So I got this curve. And what that was then, I had this curved horn, so I turned this piece. And I press fitted this piece into place. That's how it was made, and now I'll explain how it works and how it amplifies the sound. We take the sound box, and I'm going to draw a simple, simple box here. That's the sound box. And then I will draw a horn, which goes like this. So, the vibrations that we have from the sound box will also go through the horn itself and that will make sound as well as the sound that's already made in the sound box is further amplified in the ground horn because the sound has room to expand so the previous sound is mixed with the sound that's created by the vibrations of the horn itself. And then we get amplified sound. Alright, the next part is the arm that holds the horn itself. And here you can see the metal part that holds the horn and the sound box simple bent piece of metal and the wooden arm here is the main mechanism the arm pivots right here and it's held in place by this metal piece which is held in place by these nuts on the trailer rod and this nut that's here is used for uh, changing the height of the arm so it's the right height over the turntable and here we have a bent piece of metal this wasn't a feature from the beginning but the way it's made it can be moved up or down to change the springiness the further down it is, the more springy the arm is. Then we have the spring, which can move here. When there are, when there's weight from the horn and the sound box on it, it will be here. And when you want to change record, you just lift the arm and it will click in place. This wasn't a feature from the beginning either. Now it is. And it's that simple.
All right, it's time for the last piece that I'm going to show, which is the base. And of course, on top, you have the turntable. And if we look at the front, we have this adjustable knob, which looks like a wing nut. The main arm, which holds the gramophone horn, can be swung out. And on the back, we have a spring that prevents the cable from bending too much. And if we look at the bottom, we have a sealed ball bearing and a bunch of screws. And here in the middle you can see the wooden dowel that goes all the way through. To show you the inside of the gramophone base, I have to make a hole here in the fabric. And I am not going to do that, because it will ruin how it looks. So instead, I will draw what the inside looks like. So you know how it works anyway. So first I'm going to draw the sides, which are, which are made up of several segments. Like this. And we have sealed bearing right here, and we have a bearing here. Then we have the bottom piece that holds the bearing and the sides, and the top piece, and we have the turntable. And we have the wooden dowel that goes all the way through the middle. Then we have an electric motor, like this one, with a tiny pulley. And it sits about here. Then we have a bigger pulley, which is almost the size of this one. And here we have the motor compared. Small pulley and a big pulley. Not as big as this, but almost. And that pulley sits somewhere around here. Then we have a belt that goes around this big pulley and around the small pulley. And this electric motor has to turn 18 times for this turntable to turn one time. So it's 18 to 1. And that turntable has to turn at 78 RPM for the record to play. So the motor has to spin 1404 RPM. And the power to this motor is provided by a transformer. It's about here, which is connected. The positive lead here could be the negative also, but uh, in this time it's the positive. And then we have the potentiometer or variable resistor, looks like this, which sits about here. And then we have the shaft that goes through and the wing nut shaped adjustable knob and we have the negative from the transformer connected to the middle lead and one of the side leads goes back to the motor yeah. and then on the back that you saw there is a spring which has the mains coming in, which goes through the transformer. And it's a AC to DC transformer, so it goes on 330 volts 
down to 12 volts max at 500 milliamps. And this motor is running on 6 volts and the variable resistor is maximum of 5 watts. So we have the mains coming in to the transformer, getting transformed down to 12 volts, but the transformer is set to 6 volts. And the, the positive is going to the motor, and the negative from the motor is going back to the side lead of the potentiometer, and the middle is going back to the transformer. So there is no circuit that controls the speed, it's just the variable resistance that's changing the speed and this variable resistor is 100 ohms that's the lowest ohm value that I could find if I would make this one again I will find a stronger motor that can handle more amperage and a adjustable resistor that can ha that has about 50 to 20 ohms. I think that would be enough. And the transformer itself could probably be one of these. It's just an adapter for the wall. And it can be set to different values. It's the same one that's in here. And that's what's inside. Simple. And it's working. And that's all. And I hope you understand uh, how it works and uh, a bit more about how I made it. And if you have any further questions, I will answer them in the comment section. <laughs>